Hi everyone, thanks for watching Ask a Bookkeeper. This is Ingrid Edstrom. And I'm Penny, the practical professional. And we have a very special guest on the show today, Don Fotopoulos, award-winning author of the book Accounting for the Number Phobic and Associate Professor of Business at King's College in New York, is joining us all the way from New York City. Welcome, Don. Thanks so much for coming. Hi, Don. Hi, Penny. It's so good to see you. I miss you. Oh, I miss you so much, too. Well, Don, we are so excited to have you on the show today because Penny was asking me some really cool questions in our last meeting about how to make her business more profitable. Yeah, that's right. So Ingrid was telling me something about margins, about how I can figure out how much each pie costs me. And so, like, could you talk a little bit about that? Okay, Penny. So what goes into a pie? Right? All your love and hard work, that's the labor. Sure. All those wonderful, delicious ingredients, right? You use real butter in your crust and flour and yep. water and all those delicious berries and all those fillings, right? Oh, I'm hungry just thinking about it. So it's direct materials, right? It's everything that goes into that pie so you can have a finished product that you can sell. And then, of course, the labor that you have to add to those ingredients so that you have something beautiful and delicious, right? That's your cost of goods. So let's say a pie costs you $10 all in. All of that stuff together costs you 10 bucks. Yeah. You don't sell that pie for more than what you made, what it costs you to make, then you can't stay in business because you have to pay all your business expenses and you have to pay yourself too. You deserve to get paid. You're working plenty hard for it. So you take the cost of goods of what it costs you, let's say it costs you 10 bucks, and you mark that up 45%. Now that sounds like a lot of markup, but it really isn't. You gotta sell that pie for $14.50 in order for you to be able to afford to, to, uh, to afford all of your operating expenses. You have the best bookkeeper on the planet. Woohoo! Oh yeah, polymath.com! <laughs> The difference between what you sell the pie for and what it costs you is what we call margin or gross margin, right? And that gross margin is what you have to pay all of your expenses, all your operating expenses in the business, including your taxes. That's what margin is. And margin is very important because you run your business on gross margins. You don't run it on sales. And then the truth is every industry is going to have a different benchmark. So if Penny's Pies brings in a dollar, what I'm suggesting is that 30 cents of that is your margin. And what we really want is we want anywhere from 10 to 15% of that to be your profitability. So if you take your cost of goods and you mark it up by 45%, if you end up with a gross margin of somewhere around 30 to 32%. So what we're shooting for is a gross margin of about 30 cents on every dollar. What's the difference in what you suggest for the markup between retail sales versus wholesale sales? For Penny, she's got her pie shop where she's selling pies directly to customers, but then she also sells, sells to a couple of local grocery stores and the prices are different depending on who she's selling to. Right. It's really true. And you know what, Penny? You've got to ask yourself a very important question. Do you want to sell a lot of pies with a lower gross margin per pie? You, but that means you have to scale up your operation. You may have to hire a few employees. You know, there are expenses that are associated with that. So the only way you're going to win at that game is if you can become so efficient at pie making. Well, and that's, I suppose... I would, I would have to decide at that point if I wanted to still have handmade pies versus, you know, like more of the production pies. And maybe I can do the sort of thing where all the pies I sell in my shop, which have a higher margin for me, I can all do those handmade, but the ones that I send to the grocery stores, maybe those will be more production. That's exactly right. And the other thing that I would do to differentiate your distribution is I wouldn't sell the same pies in your shop that you sell to the grocery stores. It won't hurt your core business if you have a different pie in the supermarkets than you have in your shop. I would really highly recommend you think about that. Right. So many great ideas. Love it. Yay. 
Okay. So Penny, do you feel like you understand margins a little bit better? Oh, I certainly do. And I have some great ideas of how I can apply that knowledge to my business with, you know, different product lines or even like in some cases slimming down the ingredients or, or where I'm marketing them. So there was another thing that I wanted to ask you about that, that Ingrid thought you might be a, an expert on. So my, uh, my business has been doing pretty well. Like I said, I'm thinking of expanding, but I was talking to my tax accountant and uh, he said that he had a growing concern about my business. And so I wonder what that, I mean, should I, should I be concerned? A growing business or a going concern is that, 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 that's a real term, but it's not a growing concern. It's a going concern. Yeah. And the good news is a going concern is a good thing because a going oh. concern means that the business is self-sustaining. It means it's making enough gross margin to pay for all its bills and plus have a net income on the bottom line. You're, you're profitable, Penny. Yahoo! Woo! Good job, Penny. Yeah, woohoo! Yeah, that's great news. Well, I am far less concerned than I was because I have a going concern. Yay! <laughs> this is one of the pieces that, that I think is, is so funny because it's such a strange term, going concern. But it's one of those terms that unless an entrepreneur actually went to business school, most business owners have never heard that term before. And so the first time they hear it, it kind of catches them off guard. So Penny, you're not alone in that. And I thought it was great to have Dawn on the call today because that's one of the topics, along with margins, that Dawn covers in her fantastic book, Accounting for the Number Phobic. And I really recommend that business owners read that book because Dawn does a great job breaking some of these complicated ideas down into their fundamental pieces in an easy to understand way. So thanks so much, Dawn, for creating that fantastic resource for us. It's a funny book. It's the only book on accounting that will make you laugh. And it's illustrated by a Disney artist. So the people like Penny, who are super creative, who have these wonderful ideas and, and great skills, they can understand in probably three days everything that they should have learned before they opened up their business, but never did. And even if you go to business school, even if you go to college, a lot of times they teach you how to be an accountant, not how to be an entrepreneur. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to be an accountant to run a business well. And so the book is designed to get you up to speed really fast and to make it fun in the process. And so, Dawn, I understand you're, you're about to launch a, a whole new branding campaign for yourself, right? It's, isn't it like Dawn Flopopolis? Flopopolis? Something, what is it? Penny, you know what? I have a long Greek last name no one can ever remember. It's Dawn Fotopolis. Dot com, and I'd love for everybody to come and visit me there. If you want to talk to me, if you got a question, that's the place to find me. So it's dawnphotopolis.com. Can you do that? Got it, yeah. Dawn Falafel Potamus. No? Close, but no cigar. No. <laughs> Dawn Floppy Top Lips? Not quite. Uh -huh. Dawn Photopolis. Photo Dawn Photopolis. Dawn Photopolis. Good job, Penny. Hey, hey. Dawn hey. Photopolis. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't, we've known each other several years and I've always struggled with that. I'm sorry. But now, hopefully nobody will. Photopolis. Well, thank you so much, Dawn, for coming and being here with us today. And if anybody wants to learn more about Dawn and her wonderful book and the great work that she does teaching accountants and entrepreneurs all over the country, please visit DawnPhotopolis.com. That's right. DawnPhotopolis.com. <laughs> Got it. Perfect. Nailed it. Perfect. Great. <laughs> Thanks so much, Don. We'll talk to you more soon. It was great to see you, Don. Bye. Bye, everybody. Never mind the ones who tell you you're too big.